Anyway, um, if you're a bass guitarist or a lead guitarist, you have to wash your hands more often if you share the guitar. Mm, because you always have to share the instrument. Just a all. fact I pulled out the top of my head, but I think it's true. <laughs> And now, washing your hands, that's the most hygienic thing you can do after you eat, after you use the toilet, uh, or just because you feel like you need to. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, is hygiene just you know, what we take for granted, or is there yep. something beyond that? Let's find out with Dr. Chris, Dr. Dr. Christopher Lee. Uh, he's the infectious disease consultant physician and a member of the Global Hygiene Council. Very good morning, Dr. Thank good you morning. Good morning, Terrence. Morning, good morning. Morning. Right, uh, so Dr. Uh, could you tell us about this uh, studies that you actually held in 2012 um, about hygiene? Right. Mm. Hygiene Council sponsors certain uh, uh, research or studies every year to, to add value to how we address hygiene. As you mm. mentioned in the intro, I mean, hygiene is something that's very much taken for granted, right. yet we don't practice that, that well. Um, so in 2012, they did three studies that I think looked at, number one, cross-contamination, especially in the home and kitchen environment. Uh, food preparation being a very important part of hygiene. Uh, the other big study that we did was uh, looking at back-to-school studies mm. uh, because a lot of transmission occurs in schools, especially yeah. in the preschool or the primary school the children. And, and lastly, we also looked at whether hygiene has a direct impact on childhood, early childhood development. Mm. So mm. those are the three main studies that we looked at in uh, last year. Right. Yeah. Right. Is it specifically um, affecting the mental development? Uh, well, there's been data to suggest when there's a high burden of infectious diseases in a particular locality, in a particular community, uh, it does impact on very young children's mental development. Mm -hmm. And as you know, when, when you are born as a young, as a newborn baby, uh, uh, a lot of the mental development takes a lot, large part of your energy requirements, you know, up to about 80%. Some maybe even higher if you're a genius. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> but as you grow up, of course, uh, we, we, we use our energy for other things as well. Mm -hmm. So in particular, if your energy uh, uh, supply or, or utilization in the first few years is very poor because you have to deal with so many infections, right. it may have an impact on, on your mental development. All right. So uh, contrary to that, some studies may have uh, suggested that if children are not exposed to infections, they don't right. build immunity to these right. diseases. Yeah. Uh, so what is the difference between Th That will be a balance. When we talk about, about uh, uh, hygiene, we're not saying you live in a cocoon or a vacuum and mm. that, you, that you are totally known. Right? <laughs> microbes are everywhere and they are good yeah. microbes and, and bad microbes. Mm -hmm. So, But of course the bad microbes have an impact because they cause illness mm -hmm. and that's what we are trying to avoid. Mm -hmm. Right. What will be the most common um, diseases that you've come across? Well, if you're looking at that childhood age, that yeah. preschool or early school age, I think in, in Malaysia, in this part of the world, I think hand, foot and mouth is a very common thing. And okay. I'm sure you've heard the last couple of years, every year there's a small pockets of outbreak. And a couple of years, of 10 years ago, there was a nasty one in Malaysia called EB71, mm -hmm. which is a type of hand, foot and mouth. And there were some children who died. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was always etched in our memory in this part of the world. But of course, the common things like influenza, the flu-like illness, common cold, and of course, diarrhea diseases in, in, in kids, uh, especially when they're young. The washing hands is a bit of a chore for them mm. <laughs> and, and we have to inculcate that habit a little bit better. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what are the key risk factors that we're looking at in our society that can contribute to actually uh, well, a heightened risk to infection? Uh, well, I think when two things. When, when human interaction increases, I mean, the more crowded the situation is, the higher the risk of transmission. Mm. Most of the microorganisms are spread in by direct contact mm. or droplets, meaning close proximity, about three feet or so. Mm. So, me and Zamir are okay. We are quite far apart. We are okay. Mm -hmm. But two of you, <laughs> I don't know. All right? Okay. Uh, so, for example, microbes and aerosols, even if we speak, we sneeze, we cough, aerosols actually go up to the air for a while and stay up in the air. And yep. if you're nearby, you do breathe them in again. Mm -hmm. So, well, those, kind of, those kind of close <laughs> contact, uh, that adds the risk and of course in the uh, influenza it's one of the most common infectious diseases that you can transmit mm. from one person to another mm. well we've managed to survive for almost eight years so I yeah think pretty much okay so far. i don't think i passed my <laughs> hair condition to you <laughs> not yet not, not yet, yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah not okay. that much <laughs> uh, now uh, to be free of infectious disease i think is quite a lot to ask but what can we do to minimize the yeah. risk, especially for our children yeah i i think 
hygiene therefore is the, our first defense in the sense of think something that you personalize uh, the problem is it has to be habitual and as you we want to inculcate that very early yeah. uh, things like washing your hands on a regular basis uh, things that our mothers taught us before we eat and after we come up from the loo and things like that but even when you're in school and I'm sure all of us remember when you're in school uh, mm -hmm. washing hands is not the first thing you want to do every day and mm -hmm. we touch literally everything that yes. we can touch yes. and things that we shouldn't touch, we will All touch, right. you know. <laughs> uh, and uh, of course, then you can imagine the contamination that happens. And because of close proximity, if one of our, our friends has an infectious problem, let's say flu, hand, foot and mouth, you know, which sometimes is not very obvious initially, it will spread very quickly. And that's why uh, I think school setting is something very dangerous. The other thing is food preparation. They're eating in big canteens and halls and the level of hygiene at food preparation is a huge problem. Mm -hmm. uh, hygiene Council also focuses on, on kitchen hygiene because I think we take it for granted. Uh, diarrhea disease is still a major problem in the world. I mean, about millions of children get diarrhea every day. Mm -hmm. So even food preparation at home, we think that eating out is terribly dangerous, could be potentially dangerous mm -hmm. because we don't know how good the hygiene is. But at home, and we'll focus at home because home is something you can control. Right. So we need to improve the processes at home. Mm. For example, same thing. Uh, in Malaysia, we eat a lot of ulam among Malays, for example. Ulam, the yeah. salad, basically, yes. isn't it? For example, the way you prepare the food, uh, we have the same chopping board. Many of us have one chopping board, and that's it. So mm. that's where we'll cut the meat. Uh, the meat may be cooked or not cooked. If it's uh, not cooked, it's contaminated. That's right. the, the chopping board may not be cleaned properly after use of a meat cutting. There comes the salad goes on top of the right, same chopper but to be sliced. Mm -hmm. Your tomatoes, your cucumber and salads right. are not going to be cooked. You that's eat right. it raw um, and that's when contamination occurs. Salmonella, Shigella, uh, things like that. E. coli, like what happened in Europe, yeah. that's how it gets transmitted. Oh mm. man. So from your surveys, uh, do you actually observe that which area will be more dangerous uh, in terms of contamination or even infection? In kitchen. In kitchen. Well, uh, it, would it be homes or would it be schools? Oh, in terms of schools, mm. uh, the schools, obviously, the risk of transmission is higher because the tra human traffic is huge, yes. isn't it, in the canteens. But just as a point, many of us will think that if you look at the school, the dirtiest place probably will be the blue, the yes. toilet. Uh, but the toilets get clean regularly. Hopefully, they get clean regularly. <laughs> but it's actually when they, we did a study on swabbing some of, these, uh, some of the schools, we found that the most contamination in terms of micro microbial load uh, was found in the eating halls, the canteens. Mm because the, the way people sit, the way people eat, and those places are not clean as often as, let's say, in the toilet, mm -hmm. which are clean, fair, should be clean on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. At home, certainly has been well proven that most home toilets are actually cleaner in terms of microbes compared to our eating dining tables or oh. our workstations where we sit or our remote control. Everybody touches the remote control. That's we true. kill each other over the remote control, you know? <laughs> and the remote control is probably one of the most contaminated things that you can have in your home. Right. Door handles, fridge handles. Uh, uh, yeah. My kids fight over the fridge, so you can imagine what goes yeah. on the fridge handle. You must have so, some pretty good stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. I, I fight for that as well. Uh, so, uh, but, and those are the places that you... you may not clean. Yes, as and much. Yeah, you, right. you think that, okay, we don't have to clean that. Correct. <laughs> I mean, so even in schools, I guess uh, it's taken for granted and it's expected that toilets are dirty, therefore they're cleaned often. Correct. And they're used for student punishment. So, you know, back in oh. my school, we had yeah. to be the ones cleaning mm. the toilets if we got into trouble. Uh, so I assume the toilets were clean, uh, but for those places that we don't really take good care of, like, like you mentioned, door handles, mm. I, I don't even remember my school Cleaning. door handles being clean at all, yeah, right? You have to open them every day, but no one actually cleans them. So in the Hygiene Council, in our website, we do talk about processes. For example, the way you wash your hands even in the public toilet or public sink. Uh, very often, uh, after washing hands, you, you, we touch something else again, mm -hmm. then oh, we forgot to switch off the tap, we turn off the tap. But mm. if we have contaminated the hands, we will also contaminate the, the, the tap. The, the, right. the, the turn, you know? Right. And if somebody else touches it, it also gets contaminated. So, Nato, these individuals that live in these areas of high contamination or more contamination than average, uh, what's the state of their mental uh, health? Because you, you did make some comparisons between mental development and uh, infectious diseases. Right. So, so what's the link, really? Well, in the studies were done in, in of course, in impoverished countries, for example, in those in Africa, you know, where, where uh, poverty and hygiene is, is not so good. And in those studies, we have found that where there's high infectious burden in those communities, the children's development in terms of IQ development uh, in some studies have shown that they were not as, as good as those with more uh, uh, developed places or 
less, uh, more hygienic places. However, you must be aware that it's multifactorial. It's not just poverty, but also poverty is linked to other things as well, not just hygiene alone. Right. So there are many factors that, that, that do that. But certainly we believe that hygiene or the risks of infectious diseases will add a risk to these young children's development. Mm. So do you reach out more to the schools or do you plan to do that more? Well, I, I think uh, at the moment, uh, Global Hygiene talks a lot about home coming home setting because okay. the, we believe that's where people have, have control mm -hmm. uh, and, and nobody else can come into your homes and my homes to make changes there. Mm -hmm. The government can't do that, the authorities can't do that. The only person who can empower to do that is ourselves. Right. So a hygiene council wants to complement what governments are doing and Ministry of Health or WHO is doing. That means go into people's homes, talk to people in that sense and what you can do at home to make sure it's safer. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, we do engage school authorities and things like that about hygiene at school. At schools mm. uh, and we are very concerned about that because uh, during the H1N1 pandemic one of the major hits throughout the world was schools mm. you know, thousands of millions of schools were, were closed throughout the world isn't it? Mm. of course the kids were quite happy about that but it's an <laughs> impact real impact on society yeah. but in at home and I think uh, though especially in food preparation in common surfaces and objects at home uh, we often neglect that mm -hmm. Uh, how important are things like sanitizers, hand sanitizers, uh, yeah. you know, air fresheners, and things of that sort in your living space and also in your daily life? Uh, I think I think during the H1N1 or even before that SARS, I yeah. think it, it really reminded everyone how important hygiene was. Mm. I mean, Hong Kong was extremely badly hit by SARS, and they will never forget it for the rest of their lives. Mm. Uh, if you went, if you had gone to Hong Kong pre and post SARS, you will see how the, that, that has changed the, their human, uh, their, their behaviors. For example, washing hands, toilet etiquette has improved so much. Mm -hmm. Cough etiquette, the way we cough, rather than sneeze out and let everybody enjoy your showers of blessings. Uh, <laughs> we are taught to sneeze into our shoulders or armpits. Mm. Uh, it reduces the risk to other people, the mm -hmm. big droplets anyway. Uh, hand hygiene. Of, obviously on the go, you can't be running after a loo every time to wash your hands. So right. sanitizers becomes very useful. Mm -hmm. So we encourage people who meet a lot of people. For example, salespeople who go around meeting people uh, or, or, or or TV hosts. Or TV hosts as well, you know. <laughs> and they could have personal sanitizers yeah. you can put in your pocket somewhere right. easily just and do it in between uh, uh, frequently. And now you notice many celebrities, even especially in the West, you see them, their, their, hand, their, their assistants will carry sanitizers yeah. as they go and meet their fans and after they'll do a sanitizer and do it again, mm, uh, yeah. which is a, actually a clever thing to do. Yeah, so perhaps which, the uh, Hygiene Council or Dettol would like to place you know, some hand sanitizer. That's and right. Well, I'm, I'm sure they can arrange right it. Here, uh, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> and that will help promote the need for hygiene. So from, <laughs> from the Global the Hygiene lives. Council's mm -hmm. um, observation, which country will be having the you know most hygienic people? <laughs> oh, uh, we, 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 we of course can't survey the whole country, yeah. okay. the whole, whole world, whole, sorry. Whole, whole world. But we have surveyed uh, various countries. But I, I think it's important in every country, there are areas where hygiene is good and also areas where hygiene is not good. And oh, we know yeah. even now country where those areas may be, you know. Yeah. Uh, but we are focusing on people's homes and we are telling people, even in your home, there are certain pockets that is not hygienic. And the only person who can get in is we ourselves. And mm. that's what Global Hygiene talks about. All right. Thank you so much, Dato, for being here on the show. Welcome, it's been very a pleasure welcome. talking to you. Pleasure too. And there you go. Some simple yeah. tips and simple areas in your house that you commonly neglect. The remote yeah. control, the doorknob. Yeah and keep those really small hand sanitizers handy you all times. That's right, we're <laughs> going to take another short break and when we come back, uh, honorary degree conferred on our Prime Minister, find out why and what this degree is all about right after this. Don't go away.